Hey everybody, it's Pastor Jason. Today we're in Luke 17. Luke 17 is one of those chapters in the Bible where people look to finding out about the end of end of days and that sort of thing. So I'm going to read, find out what stands out to you, what points to Jesus in, in this scripture, and how should this scripture make a difference in your own heart and in your own daily life. And uh, let me pray. We'll jump right into it. Father, thank you for your love and kindness in our lives. We do look forward to the day that you do return, and we pray that you would uh, find us faithful. We pray that you would find us good stewards of every opportunity you've given us. We just thank you and praise you in your name. Amen. Here we go, Luke 17, verse 1. He said to his disciples, It is inevitable that stumbling blocks come. But woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he would cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times saying, I repent, forgive him. The apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a mustard seed, you would say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and be planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Which of you, having a slave plowing or tending sheep, would say to him when he comes in from the field, come immediately and sit down to eat? But will he not say to him, prepare something for me to eat and properly clothe yourself and serve me while I eat and drink, and afterward you may eat and drink? He does not thank the slave because he did things which were commanded, did he? Does he? So to, so you too, when you do all the things which you are commanded, you say, we are unworthy slaves. We have done only that which we ought to have done. While he was on the way to Jerusalem, he was passing between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers men who stood in, at a distance met him. And they raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. Now one of them, when he saw that he had been healed, turned back, glorifying God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face and at his feet, giving thanks to him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered and said, Where? There, were there not ten cleansed? But the nine, where are they? Was no one found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has made you well. Now having been questioned by the Pharisees as to when the kingdom of God was coming, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God is not coming with signs to be observed, nor will they say, Look, here it is, or there it is, for behold, the kingdom of God is in your midst. And he said to his disciples, the days will come when you will long to see one of the days of the, sons, the Son of Man, and you will not see it. They will say to you, look here, look here, look there. Do not go away and do not run after them. For just like lightning, when it flashes out of one part of the sky, it shines to the other part of the sky. So will the Son of Man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so it will also be in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same as happened in the days of Lot. They were eating, they were drinking, they were buying, they were selling, they were planting, they were building. But on the day that Lot went out from Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. It will be just the same on the day that the day that the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, the one who is on the housetop and whose goods are in the house must not go down to take them out. 
and likewise the one who's in the field must not turn back. Remember Lot's wife? Whoever seeks to keep his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. I tell you, on that night there will be two in one bed, one will be taken and the other will be left. There will be two women grinding in the same place, one will be taken and the other will be left. Two men will be in the field, and one will be taken, and the other will be left. And answering, they said to him, Where, Lord? And he said to them, Where the body is, there also vultures will be gathered. A fairly descriptive depiction of the Lord's return and the circumstances surrounding it. I think it's interesting the one thing that stands out to me is when we read about the ten leprous men and the foreigner who was the only one who turned back. Notice how Jesus said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they were going, they were cleansed. How oftentimes does the Lord ask us to go do something, but we have to wait for a sign to happen before we have enough faith to go and do we should be willing to have faith that the Lord has told us to do something, just to go and do it. And we should be willing to turn and give thanks to the Lord for everything he does in our lives. Yes, there might be a lot of things to stress out about right about now. But you know what? He is still good to you and I. And I know things might be difficult for you right now. But can you have thanksgiving in your heart? Can you find something to thank the Lord about? What stood out to you? Maybe mention it down in the comments below. I hope you were blessed. Be a blessing to those around you as you prepare for, for, prepare for Thanksgiving, and I'll see you tomorrow with Luke 18.